officially under the James A. Lock flood watch, looks like, the way the train sounds. It's a good thing. It's been a lot of years. It's been dust instead of rain at this time of year. But, uh, excessive either way is not, not good. Well, we've got a few out this morning. Good morning, Jerry. Uh, where, where did our musician go here? They're on strike, I think. Okay. Well, we've got uh, we've got a couple of things. Uh, if you'll notice in your bulletin, find it here on the inside page of the charge copy. Is that one of the uh, notice of the yeah, uh, mentioned you would make. I, I just wanted to mention a couple of things, Wayne. Uh, today is charge conference, and uh, I do encourage you to attend. It starts at four o'clock at First United Methodist Church in Tahlequah, and this is where our charge conference reports, including pastors' compensation, and Committee of Nominations and other reports are officially approved. Uh, I sent out a few emails to some of you about this. I didn't get everybody, but um, it's important that you can attend if, if you do. It, it, we, we have a cluster charge conferences now. When you have a district as large as ours, you have to do that. And so there's about half a dozen churches that are involved in in charge conference. And it's not going to be a long, long meeting. There's a time of refreshments beforehand, and then uh, uh, various things will be approved. So I hope you'll plan on, on being there because uh, it's in our annual meeting of the year. The other announcement I wanted to make is that I will be attending the retired clergy retreat at Canyon Camp uh, tomorrow through Wednesday. And unless things have changed, which I doubt, uh, they don't have any phone service in the canyon, at least cell phone service. So I'll be checking with uh, Mary, and if, you, if there's any issues that I need to know about, just call Mary at home, and she will get in touch with me through the telephone number at the camp. Okay? There were so many people 
gave me my hug at the homecoming and all through the week. And uh, but but it was it was wonderful. Well, I'm glad that turned out real good, and it sounds yeah. like it did. <coughs> so let's have a word of prayer. Indeed. Father in heaven, you bring to us a cheerful, happy servant, so kind that her sharing of blessings. You gave her, she, she gives away. We're thankful to know Phyllis, and we are so happy to have birthdays that we can take the opportunity to celebrate her joy with us. Thank you, Phyllis. stand if you would as we respond to the call to worship. Today we gather around God's table from near and far. We, we are, are the people, people of God. Though we differ in language, custom, and tradition, we, we are, are brothers and sisters in Christ. Christ. For there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We, we are, are one in God's, God's spirit. spirit. We are one and together we remember our Lord Jesus. For we, we are the people, people of redemption. He gave himself up for us so we could be reconciled to God. Come, let us worship the God of our salvation. We turn to 568 in your blue hymnal, 568.
Heavenly Father, on this World Communion Sunday, we join Christians around the world during this 24-hour period to celebrate and to give thanks for the one thing that we all have in common. It is our need for forgiveness. Among all of the things that we have in common, we have all fallen short of your expectations because of our sinful nature that we have all inherited. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. As God, you demand a holiness from us that we are incapable of giving. Not just a holiness from us for an hour or two on Sunday morning, but a holiness all the time. But we can't do it. Our sin nature draws us away from that. But we know that when Christ, your sin-free Son, died on the cross as a sacrifice for us, the door to you was open to a relationship with you through Christ as our mediator and our Savior. And as our great high priest, we can then approach your throne of grace at any time through him, and we are thankful. May our response to the sacrifice of Christ always be that of love and devotion expressed through worship and daily devotion. And may we continue to find ways to share the good news of Christ to those who are without hope, without forgiveness, without eternal life, those who do not know and love you. This has been a, a difficult week in communities represented by this congregation in the loss of family members and friends. Of course, we know that if in this life they trusted in you, they are now in your presence, but their absence, the pain of their absence to family members and friends is difficult to bear. So may you grant peace and comfort to those who sorrow and the knowledge that one day there will be a great reunion made possible by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jim and Jan, both present. Concerning love for others, we need to remind you, that it's Paul. For you have been taught by God to love one another. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9. Let us pray. It's easy to say in words that we love. It's more difficult to say it with our deeds. And even more difficult to say it with our financial sacrifices. Receive then these gifts as tangible expressions of our love. Stand for our doxology, please.
In a moment, when we sing our communion hymn, uh, we'll have Mary play it through once, and then we'll sing it. I, I uh, tried this one time at a covered dish dinner, and it totally failed, because you don't know it. Uh, I grew up as a kid singing it as a table grace before a covered dish dinner, and it's in our bulletin as a communion hymn, so we're going to try it again. And I think we'll be successful once you uh, are familiar with the two. This is Worldwide Communion Sunday. Churches all around the world are coming to the table of the Lord. Some have already come. Uh, some have yet to come, like our friends in the West Coast. And uh, it's a day that we celebrate the one thing we all have in common. Our need for it. Many years ago, I served this little church, and there was a woman who came every Sunday, faithfully came every Sunday, but her husband did not. And so I asked her, I said, is your husband a member of this church? And she said, yes, he, he's a member. Well, why doesn't he ever come? I'd like to meet him. He's mad at the church. Why is he mad at the church? Because when you say the Apostles' Creed, you say uh, the word Catholic. Now back in those days, when we had a different hymnal, the word Catholic was not defined. If you look at the hymnal today for the Apostles' Creed, on page 881, there's a double asterisk after Catholic, and it takes you down to the definition of universal. And I told her that. I said, you tell him that refers to the entire church, whether we're Protestant or Catholic. And she reported back the next week that that wasn't a good enough explanation. He was still mad. I, think, I just think he didn't want to come to church and that served as a good excuse. And then after I left, they got a woman preacher and that really set him off. <laughs> but that's what the word Catholic means. It means universal. It doesn't matter whether one is a Protestant or one is a Catholic. We are part of the church. The Greek word for church is ekklesia. It means those who are called out. Those who are called out of the world to serve Christ. Called out of the world to love and serve our Lord and Savior. Now, I've talked to some people that say, I'm neither, I'm not Catholic, and I'm not Protestant. And I said, well, how do you define yourself? I'm non-denominational. We have a lot of those. And that's good, that's fine. Those churches are growing uh, more than the mainline churches in some areas. We call them Bible churches or whatever. But I told my friend, I said, well, if you are a non-denominational church, what that means is, you're not a member of one of the mainline Protestant denominations, but you're still a Protestant. He wanted to argue me over that point, but I think I won. You're still a Protestant. And it doesn't matter whether you worship at a large church or a small church, whether you have thousands present or less than 20 or two or three. You know, I told you the story that I had one lady show up for church uh, for Easter. It was, uh, no, it wasn't Easter, but it was around that season. And uh, at Woodall, she was the only one that showed up. And I was ready to give the benediction and go home. And she let me have it. She says, Preacher, I got up this morning at my usual time. I bathed, I dressed, here I am, let's have church. So we had church. We didn't have the three, but we had the two. Or two or three are gathered together. It doesn't matter whether you worship in a building or outside. I alluded in Bible class to the time I went to Africa to the World Methodist Conference and we went to a Maasai tribal village and there were two or three hundred people there and they sat outside. It was a summer day in July. It wasn't hot because that was getting into their winter season. But we, uh, we sat under the sun and had church. Doesn't matter. If a group of people come together, and some people meet in homes. For whatever reason, they don't want to be in a, a building called a church. They meet in somebody's house. And there might just be a few neighbors come together on Sunday morning or another time that might be convenient and they sing hymns and they 
hear a message and study the scriptures. See, there's all kinds of ways to celebrate the church. All kinds of churches. And so that's what the word Catholic means. In the scripture for today, and Mary, I apologize, I did not send it to you. Well, I know, but as it, as it turned out, I did have a verse in mind, so I'll just go ahead and share it. Uh, it's from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let me get my Bible here. It's been kind of a hectic week anyway because you're getting ready for charge conference. Uh, a lot of stuff to do. Uh, that form that I had everybody sign a few weeks ago when we had company in the house, I took it home and I thought I took it home and I lost it. Came back with another form and had a few people sign it and then I found the original form in the file cabinet in the church office. How I got in there, I don't know. I put it there, of course. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 10, verses 16 and 17. Paul writes, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread, one body, we are partakers of that one bread. So that's what we celebrate on World Communion Sunday. We are united on our need of salvation. Are we all different? Oh yes, we are all different. And our differences are many. And what are our differences? Well, I could share a list with you and spend a lot of time on that list. We'd be here all day. Sexual differences, male and female. Now, I know today that's debated. But my Bible tells me there are just two. Are there differences in age? Oh, sure. We have young people and old people middle-aged people, differences in race, differences in nationality, political differences, uh-oh. We have the Republicans and we have the Democrats and we have the, the rise of the socialists and we have the moderates. Religious differences, oh yes. We have conservatives and we have progressives. We have a new group that's new to me called the uh, centrists. Centrists are kind of in the middle. They don't really define themselves as Christians, as conservative or progressive. They're just kind of, kind of in the middle. And I'm still not sure what that means. So we have these differences. <coughs> differences in uh, economic differences. Some people live and have a lot of money and travel a lot and live in nice homes and and some people just have a, a little shack that they call home. They don't have any money to go any place after they pay their bills. Differences in lifestyle. Some people like to live high on the hog, and some people can't afford to live high on the hog. Uh, some people uh, like to do certain things that others don't. Physical differences, of course. Uh, when I was on the board of Health and Welfare, as a part of the Oklahoma Annual Conference, we had a woman on the board who was physically, and the word they used back in those days was physically handicapped. We don't use that word anymore. And she helped us understand, uh, this was back in the 70s, you understand. And she helped us understand that the churches had to make changes for people like her. She couldn't use the restrooms in the building where we were meeting, the conference headquarters, because the bathroom stalls were too small. And then you have steps. And so you, we have people with mental disabilities, emotional dis disabilities. In fact, I remember this lady defined us who were just fine physically. She called us TABs, T-A-B. I said, what's a TAB? She said, you are temporarily able-bodied. 
there will come a time when you may be like me. All these differences. And these and many other differences is what makes World Communion so special because at least we have one thing in common. And that is we're sinners and we need redemption. I, I, I roughly think there are two ways that we are alike. Yes, we are sinners in need of redemption. And secondly, we share the same loaf, which is Christ, who called himself the bread of life to all who believed and calls us to lay all of our differences at the foot of the cross. I wasn't going to share this story because, darn it, I think it's one of those stories I've shared before. But it's been a couple of years, so you don't remember it anyway, right? But I was thinking about differences. I was thinking about when I went to the World Methodist Conference in, in Kenya. And we met in the Kenyatta Convention Center. And there were, I don't know how many were there, maybe a couple of thousand. There were so many that when it came time for communion, they had set up about a dozen, maybe more, communion tables around the conference room and you were to go and, and stand or kneel to, at the station closest to where you were seated. And so when I went for communion, I couldn't help but notice who was on my right and who was on my left. On my right was Archbishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa. On my left was a man I had seen the day before on the back of a garbage truck. He came from the visitor's gallery. And we were, and here I was in the middle, <laughs> a green preacher that didn't know enough to do much of anything at that time. There we were at the same table. I remember checking into the hotel in Kenya and the desk clerk asked the man in front of me his name so she could get his room key and he gave his name as Chuck Colson. Uh, I, I knew the guy looked familiar from TV. He was one of the Watergate Seven, special prosecutor for Nixon. He was there. He, was, he, he had served his time. He was, an, he was a felon. He had started his own ministry, and he was there. Isn't it just interesting to think about when you think about all the people in this world that you rub shoulders with, that you work with, live around, socialize with, and when you travel and you bump into different people, and we have all these differences, but yet at the same time, we're all the same. Unfortunately, not all people recognize it, but it's true. We're all the same. We're all sinners in need of redemption. So on this World Communion Sunday, let's come to the Lord's table and partake of the, the bread and the cup. The, the bread reminding us of the body of Christ when he was nailed to that cross and the cup reminds us of the blood that was shed. Come in the knowledge that only he as the sin-free Son of God was worthy to be that sacrifice to die in your place and take the punishment that you deserve for your sins. And because he did that, God comes to us with his love and with his forgiveness and with his grace. I'm going to uh, invite us now to turn to our uh, communion hymn. Actually, we'll do the th great thanksgiving first. And that will be followed by our communion hymn. The hymn will be 621. Uh, the, the communion, uh, the, the uh, insert for World Communion Sunday, however, is what we turn to now. And you have it as an insert in your bulletin. Come, people of God, out of your separateness to enter into unity with one another and with all those who seek the presence of Jesus Christ through the bread and the cup. Come, confessing any sin that separates you from God and from one another, eternal God of all people and places, we confess to you our lack of oneness 
with our human brothers and sisters as we begin the celebration of our unity in Christ. We have lacked the vision to see that people living in places we call foreign are as surely your children as we are. Our sensibilities are We cling to the pride of nation and denomination as if we had a special claim on truth. Gracious God, forgive us and renew our spirit in us. A spirit of compassion, understanding, and humility. Fill us with the vision of unity in Christ and enable us to incarnate Christ's love so that we may worthily partake in the body and blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. We praise you. O oh God. We acknowledge you as the rightful object of our worship and obedience. All earth worships you. Heaven and earth are full of majesty and glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The godly communion of our hearts praise you. Day by day we glorify you. We worship your name forever. World without end. Amen. We do give you thanks, O oh God. For the mighty sweep of your love, embracing all people and all nations. We thank you that you have sent Jesus Christ to us to break down the walls of hostility which divide the earth's people and to reveal your all-encompassing love, making us all one. Through the power of your spirit, may this unity become reality. Now, by your presence, make sacred this feast in memory of Jesus Christ. As this broken bread was scattered like grain on the hillsides and then when gathered together became one loaf, so may your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth unto your eternal realm. Like Christ who was offered up to you that we might live and like wine which was poured out that all might share in the signs of new life, so may the lives of your people be poured out that all might share in the lives of your people poured out in compassion and in solidarity with the poor, the oppressed, and the hungry of the world. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, your servant, that we pray. Amen. Our communion hymn, and again we'll have Mary pray through this one time, is uh, 621 in your hymnal. Be present at our table. <laughs>
here for those that might be curious. Uh, Greg, of course, is doing our video production. We have to turn in our attendance each Sunday to the district office, and that includes online. And we registered about an average of a little over 80 uh, for this past month. Wow. That's good. Thank you, Greg, again for doing this for us.